Hi, I'm Sam from Chrism Acrylic Pouring and we're based in the UK. Today I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful jellyfish. There are two elements to this pour. The top part is a sort of modified Dutch pour where we're going to blow the paint down. And the second element uh, is a string pull and we're going to pull the string towards the body. Now I've already done this one this is part of a commission of three and I've used, I don't know if you can see, I've used some iridescent colours to help give this a shimmery feel as it's swimming through the waters. The first thing we're going to do before we get any paint on the canvas is to measure out how much string we're going to need to create the tendrils. So I'm going to lay the string down on the canvas and just roughly sort of estimate how much string I'm going to need. It doesn't matter if you have more, but it's not so good if you have less. So I'm going to imagine that the body of the jellyfish is going to be around about here. So I'm going to cut my length of string there. And then I'm going to cut probably another three pieces um, the same so I can then get some paint onto the string. I've got the string laying on a piece of plastic so I can just wipe the paint off when I'm done. So the colours today I've chosen are Amsterdam Phthalo Blue, Pibio Iridescent Green Yellow and Pibio Iridescent Green Blue. So I'm going to start by laying some paint on the string and I do it in alternate layers. Don't worry if you don't get all the string because we're going to go back and tap over with a lolly stick just to get them all mixed in. So I'm now going to fast forward this. Now I'm going to tap the paint in. So just choose one colour at a time so you don't contaminate the other colours. So I do this bit first so the paint can soak into the string and then I can go ahead and create the body of the jellyfish while this is all sitting and marinating as it were. And just pop a little bit more blue on there. I do all four pieces of string at once because it's just so much easier than individually laying the string down and recoating it. My canvas is all prepared, so I have masking tape on the back and I've got pins in. So when I take the canvas off the tray I can sit it down on a surface and lift it up away from the surface so any paint that's on the underside won't stick. Um, I have it on a tray because we're going to be working upside down and it's easier for me to turn the canvas around on a tray rather than picking it up um, from the underside. Okay now the white is down we can play. So I have marked out roughly where I want the body of the jellyfish to be using a couple of cocktail sticks um, with the measurements from the previous jellyfish. As it's a commission of three, I want to get the jellyfish placed similarly on the canvas. Um, so now I'm going to start by using the phthalo blue and just pour it onto the canvas 
and I'm going to come back again just build it up until I've got enough paint on okay and then we're going to go in with the green yellow And finally, the green blue. And I might just put a smidge more phthalo blue on there. doesn't matter if I've got a little drip there all the paint's going to be blown down anyway so I'm now using um, an old trusted straw I know it's plastic and thank goodness they have banned, banned plastic straws but this one has a really nice big aperture to it so I'm hanging on to it for as long as I can so now I'm going to blow the paint down the canvas So as you can see, I have blown the paint out, but because I'm working upside down, I it's more difficult to judge the body. So I'm now going to pick my tray up and turn it round so I can actually have a better look at the shape of the body. So I think I need to blow out just a little bit up here but I'm quite happy and as you can see I'll lift it closer there's some lovely cells going on and that's created with the uh, green yellow although everything is mixed to the same consistency the green yellow is a li little bit more like the metallics um, so it does naturally create some cells So I'm now going to leave that alone because uh, sometimes less is more and I'm now going to go on to the string which so if I move this to one side I can try and bring this in to shot no maybe not <laughs> um, so here is my string and I'm going to peel off each one and show you how to do the string pull. So with the string, I've now taken, I've got it in one hand and in the other. So I'm holding it with one hand so I can control where I lay the string. So for this one, I'm going to start 
in the middle. I'm just going to lay it down. Once I've laid the string down, I'm committed. So I'm going to lay it in a, a gentle S shape. If you were doing flower string pulls, you would do a more exaggerated S shape, but we want uh, less flower, more tendril. So I'm just taking the string just to the edge of the body. Now I'm going to pull. My eye is going to remain focused here, not up there. If I stay here, if my eye stays here, then I can concentrate on the string staying in one place. If I'm looking up here, the string will probably go all over the place and I'll get a very wide tendril. So I'm just going to pull, keeping the string low. And then I can use my other hand. And now I can see what's going on with the end of the string. And then just gently pull up and away. And then obviously don't drip your string on, onto the canvas again. So now I can go again with another piece. And I'm going to go shorter for this one. So I'm going to come in here again, laying it down. And preparation is key, especially with acrylic pouring. If, uh, if you're prepared and everything is ready, it'll go beautifully. If you don't, then quite often, and as we all know, once you think, oh, I'll just do a quick painting, that's when things go awry. So I advise you, especially with a painting like this, to be extremely organised and prepared. There we go, second one. So this is nice and quick because, as I've just said, we're all prepared and ready to go. So I'm going to come in even shorter, I think, here. And pull. And then I have one more. If I want to go again, I can do. I just wipe down the string that I've used because obviously it has some white paint on it and we don't want to get the white paint in anywhere else. Um, so I think, oh, whoops, there we go. I'll come round this way. And it doesn't matter if you overlay one of the other tendrils. There we go. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I think I'm done with those. But I need to turn it round and have a look, make sure my composition is good. Okay. Now, to me, it doesn't look quite balanced here. So I'm going to perhaps bring a short one in down here. So I'm going to pause and come back. That's better. That looks a little bit more balanced now. So the last thing I'm going to do is just bring some very fine tendrils down into the painting.
I'm wiping the stick in between so I don't introduce any white back into the body. There we go. So I think, oh, that one hasn't joined up. There we go. So that's it. I'm going to leave it alone. The last thing I'm going to do is torch to remove any air bubbles. So as the painting dries, I will keep going back and popping any air bubbles that arise to ensure that the painting dries nice and smoothly. Thank you for watching. Here is the final result. It's dried beautifully. I'm going to go in and see if I can show the iridescent colours in it. I'm very happy with this. Here are the final three in their magnificent aquatic glory. Thank you so much for watching and as a footnote I'd just like to say this is the first video that I have filmed and edited myself uh, so please be kind and I look forward to making another video for you soon. Thank you. Bye.